Well, good morning. It is cold here at noontime on uh, Saturday, and this will probably be uploaded Saturday evening if everything works well. Uh, I don't know how much scripture I'll use, but I just got finished trying to download something to Facebook, and it wouldn't let me share it. And I wanted to share it because I, I, I believe that men, uh, has good intentions, but good intentions without the spirit of God will backfire on you. Good intentions will call down someone, but it won't get to the core of the issue. I'm the type of person that I want to get to the core of the issue. I don't want to just play around with the snake. I want to grab the snake, but I realize that I'm a nobody. I'm nothing. I understand that. But I heard, well, first of all, let me say this. There was a gentleman that asked a question today. Is it all right for a Christian lady to wear makeup and eyelash? Well, I answered back just in a very blunt little way. I said, yes, if it's in modesty, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, he comes back at me and sends me a, a verse that is in the book of Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30, I think. Now, I, I'm not over there, but it was basically talking about makeup and, and paint on your face and all of this stuff that Jeremiah was discussing. And I ended up having to tell him that, look, Jesus came to fulfill the law, and I would rather have Jesus than I would the law. Now, he ain't answered back yet, and he might not. I don't know. He might be thinking about what I wrote him. But again, I can go and take the Bible and make it say what I want it to say. And I think a lot of people are guilty of trying to prove their own theory, not based on what the Word of God says. Now, I will go on record to say this. Some women look horrible without a little bit of a shot of makeup or eyelash. I'll be honest with you. Some people take it to the extreme. Some women need makeup. But yet you got religions that'll tell you, oh God, religion, uh, makeup ascended hell. No, there's one thing that sends a person to hell, and that is unbelief. You mark what I say today. There's only one thing that will send a person to torment, and that is not believing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit of God. That's the only thing. And it, and it irks me to know that people will put this stuff out there and not think about what they are saying and what they are doing is is makeup damnable? I'll be honest with you. If it is, there's a lot of people. But I don't think Jesus today looks at powdering your nose and your eyelashes or your makeup. Jesus looks at the heart. Why can't we understand that the Bible says what is flesh is flesh and what is spirit is spirit. And it goes on to say, and them that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Why is that so Difficult, you know why? Because the devil wants to make it about makeup. The devil wants to make it about eyelash. The devil wants to make it about flesh. 
And none of us would be able to get there based on our flesh. God's not impressed with what I've got on. He's not impressed with the little room that I'm out here in today and it freezing in this room right now. God ain't worried about a woman's eyelash. He's worried about the heart of the person. And when will we ever get to the point that we're more concerned about the heart of a person? Then I turn over and I find a video that somebody sent on TikTok. And it was one that when you went by the video, it had to play and the volume was up and it was eye-catching. And this man was in there just giving it everything, using his voice to the top of his lungs, talking about that the women in the church or the girls in the church needs to dress modestly, that you don't need to sit there trying to cover your legs up and trying to fight your dress. You don't need to be tipped in the boys. Now, that's what he said. You don't need to be tempting the boys with your inappropriate dress. And he kept going on and on, and he did mention Jesus, and then he did mention salvation. But let me tell you something. You don't go to a doctor to scream at a cancer. You don't go to a doctor and let the doctor scream at the cancer. I'm screaming. Take this little thing of Play-Doh right here. This Play-Doh is a cancer. How do you think this is going to feel if I'm screaming at the Play-Doh? Do you think the Play-Doh is going to listen to what I say? No. The Play-Doh is not going to listen. You know why? Because the Spirit of God is not in the Play-Doh. Why is it that it's so difficult for pastors and preachers to get up there and talk about the symptom rather than the ailment that is going on? You know what the ailment is? The person that is wearing the dress might not be saved. The person wearing the dress might not know about salvation. A person that is going to church for the wrong reason might be waiting on somebody to show them the power of God instead of up there screaming at somebody about a lousy dress. Is there anything wrong with preaching about short dresses? and men's eyes looking at women's legs and all of this. There's a time and place for all things. I'm not downing the man on what he was saying. I'm saying, why scream at the symptom? The symptom is inward, not outward. He's preaching to the outward. He needs to be preaching to the inward. Not just the outward. You know what them people needed in that church that morning? <laughs> For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I mean, I would think I would start pointing fingers at people. And I would get in their face and I would say, For all have sinned. You, Missy. You, Jane. You, David. You, Billy. I'd be pointing names. For all have sinned. He could start with his own name first. You get into somebody's face and you're going to get a reaction from them. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. People need to see that. People need to hear that. Then the next verse I believe I would give them would be Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8. Romans chapter 5. 
In verse number 8, God commendeth his love toward us in that while we was yet in sin, Christ died for us. They needed to know that there was a man named Jesus that paid the price of salvation. But yet we're talking about a lady's dress, which is the symptom. It's not the, it's not, it, it, it's the inward. He's talking about the symptom. He needs to be talking about the fact that God commendeth his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's what they need to hear. That they are a sinner. For all have sinned. Then I would take them over to Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is death. And you know what I would do? I would explain eternal death. I would explain the fact that you die every single second in the pit of hell. You die every single five seconds, every single minute in the place of torment that you suffer. I would explain that verse and harp on that verse for the wages of sin is death. It's not just talking about somebody in the casket. It's talking about death. Eternal death, death that lasts forever. For the wages of sin is death, but, thank God for the buts in the Bible, but the gift of God is eternal life through who? Through a long dress? Through a face that don't have makeup on it? A face that don't have eyelashes long? What does the Bible verse say? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know why the women might be wearing them dresses? It might be because they ain't saved in the first place. It ain't the makeup. It ain't the short dress. It might be that they don't have nobody setting the right example for these kids like that. They learn it from somewhere. Then I take them over to Romans 10 and verse 9. The Bible says that if thou, I'd point out who the thou is. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, I would point to the fact, Jane, have you confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus? I'd make people mad. Oh, I'd make people real, real mad. But there's a way that you do it, and you do it in love, but you don't go and harp about somebody's dress. That's just the symptom. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, I'll think about saving you. That's not what my Bible says. Why don't people preach in the fact that they need to hear what, what you have to do to be born again? You want to change in a girl's dress? Maybe you not need to think about changing the heart first. Get to the core of the issue first. Change the heart first. Then you'll have an access to be able to tell him Romans 10 and verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart. It ain't talking about church membership here. It's talking about believing in the Christ that changes our mind, that changes our look, that changes us every way. But when you're only talking to the symptom, it don't do a whole lot of good. Then the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be saved. But people don't hear that. We hear that verse at the end of the service, and we don't really care about that verse because that wasn't really part of the main message. No, we need to be caring about using Romans 10 and verse 9 in the middle of the message, not at the very end of the message. We need to hear it at the beginning of the message. 
And then Romans 10 and verse 13, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know why I think there's a dress issue? It might be because there is an adult issue and that they might be looking at the adults as being unsaved. And that might be the reason that they are putting on the dresses and doing the things that they're doing is because they don't see real salvation in the mom and daddies. Oh, they see a church member. Oh, they see somebody that's paying their tithes. They'll see their mom and daddy show up in suits and ties and nice dresses and being very conservative. Yeah. And guess what happens on the day of judgment? Depart from me. I never knew you. Oh, but God... We served you. Remember, we was members at this church and that church. Yeah, I remember that. But you didn't believe in me. And what's really going to be sad is when the Lord goes and says, depart from me, the girl that has the short dress on. But Lord, I didn't know. Nobody told me. Nobody told me. There's another verse in 1 John 5 and 13, and the Bible says, These things have been written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know. That's the problem. A lot of people don't know. A good majority of the houses of prayer today, they have no clue if they're really born again or not. But yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to tell that because that's going to mess up the offering plate. That's going to make Sister Jane get mad and start running her mouth. And all of a sudden, that mouth is going to affect another mouth. And then it's going to cause a ruckus in the church. You know what? That's the very reason why I believe the Lord is put on the back row of a lot of these places that are in the houses of prayer. They are put on the back row. Jesus is put on the back row, rather. John 5.24 tells us to hear the word and believe the word. But yet we don't want to preach that. John 3.16 is very clear. For God so loved the world. You think he loves the girl with the short dress? Sure. Do you think that everything that goes on at the church house in the morning is going to be over and above board? <laughs> Somebody is going to be there that has a little bit of a high, high dress. You know, God ain't really worried about the high dress. He's more worried about the, the condition of the heart. He told Nicodemus, you must be born again. His religion didn't help him. He was religious, but he was lost. And if all you are guilty of doing is preaching that the symptom, you might better want to maybe open up your eyes a little bit deeper and get off of your five-point program of your message and get into the message of what thus saith the Lord. And then you might start seeing some people changing their ways when they get real salvation. I think that's where the problem is. People don't have real salvation. They have church member. I'm a, I'm in the body of the church. I've come here to impress the boys. That I'm not I'm not saying that doesn't go on. I'm not saying it doesn't go on. I'm saying that God doesn't look at that as much as He looks at the heart. He looks at the heart. He looks at my heart. He looks at your heart. And he knows all the shenanigans that are going on. He knows whether you believe in him or you more impressed to show your body to somebody. Why do you think Facebook and YouTube has got so much garbage and trash on it? Because they're doing it a lot like a fish hook. You put a worm on the fish hook, you throw that fish hook into the water, you're hoping that you'll catch something. 
It's easy to get on YouTube and go and scroll and you'll see all kinds of stuff. You don't hear the preacher preaching about that. Get rid of your computer. Get rid of your laptop. You don't hear preachers preaching about that. You hear them talk about short dresses and makeup. And Jesus is looking at the heart. He looks at my heart. I didn't see me making this kind of message. This is just what's coming out. Elderly ministry is how you contact me. If you want to call and talk to me and you want to discuss salvation, that's what I will discuss with you. You call and tell me that I'm wrong for calling out the preacher that's preaching on short dresses. I'd quiz you about your salvation first. I'd ask you when you got born again, when you got saved. What has Jesus done for you? How many souls have you won to the Lord since you've been saved? I think I'd be sort of harping about that. I believe that would be what I would harp about. But see, we don't want to go there. We don't want to touch that with a 10-foot pole, see. Elderly ministry is how you get a hold of me. I hope that you're seeing the heart today, that you're not seeing the symptom, that you're seeing what is the real issue. The issue is what Jesus sees is the issue. Elderly ministry, again, is how you contact me. If you want to reach me by YouTube Direct, right here is YouTube. You can get a hold of me there on YouTube. I don't mind talking with you. If you call and jump me about something, you better just have at it. It's not my intent to tick somebody off. It's my intent to just share what I believe the, the cancer is. The cancer is deep, but we want to talk about the cancer that is on the outside of the skin when Jesus is more concerned about the inward. He's looking at your inward today. He's examining your inward today. All right, I've got it off of me now. Thank y'all for tuning in.